Um, we did uh, we did jump ahead. I got a little ahead of myself um, when we were talking about hot varieties, uh, hot varieties, and we talked about them for the whirlpool. Um, and then let's let's talk a little bit about uh, dig a little bit deeper into. You mentioned some of the hops that you like on the uh, dry hop side. Um, can you dig into that process for us a little bit with when you're dry hopping, how you're dry hopping, contact time, dumping the cone, uh, all, all things dry hopping here? Just to reel it back before we do that, one thing that we didn't uh, talk about in Whirlpool uh, was uh, adding phosphoric at that point, uh, which is something ah. we do. We used to adjust at Whirlpool, and now we're actually adjusting uh, pH down to about 4.6 at the start of boil. Um, we used to do that in Whirlpool. Um, now we're doing it earlier on. And uh, that certainly aids in uh, forming that permanent haze in the beer. So. Okay, so you're dropping pH of the wort in the kettle before any hops. Correct. Okay, and you are dropping that to 4.6? Yep. You wild man. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're dropping to 4.6 because we know the hops later are going to push that pH back up, even though yeah. the boil is going to dry, dry, drive it down. Uh, so anyway, so by the time you're done with your 90 minute boil, because you're doing uh, domestic pills or 60. Uh, yes, 90 minutes. <laughs> okay, when you're done with your boil, your pH is going from four, six to what? Uh, typically, we'll knock out around four, seven, four, eight, something like that. Uh, it's going to depend on the uh, on the hop load and uh, and type. Sure. Of hops. Yeah, but how much so, drop in pH do you get during the course of the boil? Uh, again, it kind of depends on the beer. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Usually a tenth or two. Okay. So. Yep. Exactly. That that that's that's what I get as well. Yeah, and then you'll you'll kind of bounce that back up. So if you lose two tenths uh, in boiling, and then you add a pound and a half of hops in there, you're probably going to end up you're going to land at about the same spot. Yep. 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 That makes sense. Um, um, the other the other thing dropping that pH down at the beginning of the boil does uh, is it aids with not picking up color. So the lower your boil pH is, the less uh, color development you're going to have. I love that. That's sweet, man. That's that's good. You're you're giving me some stuff I need to be I, I need to be playing with. That's awesome. Um, and especially for those of you, if anybody is running on a direct fire kettle, um, and you're looking where where you might actually be picking up some color, and and you want to be making these really pale hazies, get take give that a look because that is uh, that's something that like was knocking around in my head vaguely as a concept, but never attached to this. So check it out. And, and especially because this beer is going to be ultimately about you, you're, you're going to be driving the pH up tons with, with the volume Throughout pops the that you're using. So, yeah. so yeah, so, yeah. that's uh, so, so dropping, knocking out around four, six uh, is going to help you land your, your final beer pH, finished beer pH um, under 4.5. Um, which is, uh, you know, from a micro stability uh, standpoint is desirable. Anything over that, you start getting into uh, a danger area um, as far as uh, as growth of unwanted things in there. So Sure. And so so Robert Brown uh, with a, a, a kind of a follow up, he says, so interesting. So what does that make final beer pH at packaging? So you're not you don't have to adjust pH again at any point because you've adjusted it up front. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And and you're shooting for four oh, four I mean, with these know, hazies? What's that? You're shooting for four four in the package? Yeah, under four five. Yeah. Under four five. Okay. Yep. Sweet. And, yeah, and like you said, that, it is, that's it's, a, that, it's food safety. It is food safety. And it you know, that's something that uh, we picked up uh, from bigger brewers like Russian River and you listen to Vinny talk about it and how adamant he is about uh, about keeping those numbers low. Um and uh, anybody that has a, a QC, an actual QC, QA uh, lab, and people that know what they're doing in there are going to start yelling at about 4-4. Four, four, so. Yep. Uh